Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, welcome to lecture number 21. So, we have been discuss discussing about the Kepler's problem. So, we continue with that. So, going back to our uh, the equation that we have derived tan theta by 2 equal to 1 plus e divided by 1 minus e tan e by 2. So, we will continue with this. Now, from here we can extract this uh, if we differentiate this basically. Uh, sec square theta by 2 suppose uh, this equation is differentiated. So, differentiate this equation d for n c 8 this equation. Five. Uh, this will write as equation number 6 sec square theta by 2 1 by 2 and on the right hand side then we have as we know these are constant for Keplerian orbit. So, if, uh, already I have stated many times say E i capital omega small omega these are constants for Keplerian orbit. Okay. Therefore, there is no point in differentiating this here. And then we have to take the differentiation of this. So, this becomes 1 by 2 sec square e by 2. And on this side we also have to this side we also have to write the d theta term. So, here d theta and here we have to write d. So, this gets reduced to sec square theta by 2 d theta e by 2 d and we are interested in getting the d theta. So, we write it in this format. we need to further work on this and put it because here theta by 2 is appearing. So, we need to eliminate this in order to get the proper result. So, rearranging So, we need to rearrange it. Okay, one more thing we uh, need to uh, observe before we go into the other part. If we look into this equation, or either uh, better here in this place. If we look here in this equation, so what we can observe that when theta equal to 0, this implies E is also equal to 0 okay. and when theta equal to 180 degree or pi or pi in terms of radians. So, this will imply, so th this side the left hand side becomes infinity or similarly the right hand side then will be infinity. So, this implies E is also theta equal to pi by 2. So, this also implies E equal to pi or 180 degree. Okay. 
so these are the two points where theta and e they match the other points they are not matching so this is simply visible from if you look into the ellipse and the auxiliary circle see the this figure is not very good but still it will do this is the focus here this is r this is theta and here this is your a this point we have taken as m this we have taken as p n this we have taken as f and this as center so you can see that uh, in this angle as e so what we can see that once e equal to 0 so that means m is lying here in this place and at that time theta also lies here in this place so that is very obvious if you drag p here so m will also get dragged here in this place and uh, if m comes to this place that means you are extending it such that the r vector you are extending from this place to this place and then dragging one vertical from this point to this point so at that time whatever the theta value will be e will be equal to 90 degree but theta will not match theta because theta this will be an inclined distance from here to here so uh, this angle and this angle this uh, this theta angle not going to match but once you come to this point again so you can see that at this point theta will be also 180 degree and e will be also 180 degree so at this point and this point only they match so here theta equal to 0 and e is also equal to 0 at this point theta equal to 180 degree and e is also 180 degree so these are the two points at which they match the other points they will not coincide so this we can state as as theta increases from Zero to hundred eighty degree. E also increases from zero from zero degree to hundred eighty degree. But they match. at theta equal to 0 degree and theta equal to 180 degree that is in this case theta e will be equal to 0 degree and here this e will be equal to 180 degree so th these are the only two matching points other places they will not match so this equation again we rewrite here tan square e by 2 d and then we insert the values tan e by 2 is Known tan theta by two is known to us, so we can insert here. Sorry, this is theta by two, so here this should be theta by two. So here this is tan square theta by two. So tan square theta by two is available from tan theta by two is available here, so we can insert that and rearrange that equation. So rearranging. rearranging equation 7 that gives us d theta equal to 1 plus e divided by 1 minus e
times sec square e by 2 divided by 1 plus and now tan theta by 2 whatever the value we have. So, that value we need to insert. So, tan theta by 2 we have just written as 1 plus e divided by 1 minus e under root tan square e by 2. Okay. So, if we rearrange it, so this comes in here in this format and here one thing we have to take care, this is uh, tan theta by 2 is, if you look here in this place, tan theta by 2 is under root of this 1 plus e. So, here we have the term, we have replaced this uh, tan square, sec square theta by 1 plus tan square theta. So, we need to square also. So, this squaring we have squared this term, but this term is not a squared. So, we have to square it. So, if we square, so this under root will go and with this we have then 1 minus e, we simplify it little bit 1 plus e and this will break up in terms of sin e by 2 divided by cos e by 2. So, this will be sin a square e by 2 and here we will have cos a square e by 2. Okay. And of course, uh, then we will have here sec a square e by 2 times cos a square e by 2 and times 1 minus e. So, after rearranging we get this. So, one little bit more steps are required. Sec square e by 2 times cos square e by 2 is 1. So, this we write as 1 or we can write here 1 minus e and this term we will rearrange. So, we have to re rearrange this particular term. So, for doing this we write here, break it here and then this is cos square e by 2 minus e One plus c divided by one minus c, then this term, this term that gives us one, and here these two terms we have to combine them. So this we can write as minus e times cos square e by two minus sin square e by two. Okay, so, for, so final step we have to write for, so this becomes 1 plus e under root, this one and this one we will combine together by dividing. So, this will be 1 minus e because here this is in under root term and here this is without under root. So, therefore, we get this term and in the denominator we have 1 minus e cos square e by 2 minus sin square e by 2. So, this is 1 minus e square under root divided by 1 minus e cos e. And this is following from this particular principle cos square e by 2 minus sin square e by 2. This is the trigonometric principle you must be aware of. I just took a shortcut. This will be 1 minus cos square e. So, this another this is cos square e by 2. So, this is 2 cos square e by 
2 minus 1 and this is nothing but equal to cos a. So, this is what we have utilized here in this place. So, d theta finally, we get as 1 minus e a square divided by 1 minus e cos a. So, reason for doing this all this exercise, it is a simplification of the whole process. So, 7 and then this equation is now 8. Okay, now, finally, we can uh, work with our equation, where d theta we have got as 1 minus e a square under root divided by 1 minus e cos e, this is equal to d e, this is available to us. So, we utilize it in this equation. Now, we need to put the value for the r in whatever we have derived. So, h we will take it outside first theta 1 to theta 2 and as soon as we replace d theta in terms of e and r also in terms of e. So, this theta 1 and theta 2 they also they, they will get replaced in terms of the corresponding e variable. So, uh, let us first uh, work in terms of uh, leave it like this and later on we will change it. So, we have here r a square uh, d theta. And going back and looking for the uh, this r value. So, this r equation we have got as r equal to a times 1 minus e cos e, this was the equation we got. So, this gets in the square format and then d theta from this place is 1 minus e a square under root divided by 1 minus e cos e t. Uh, h I have already taken outside. Now, this theta 1 instead of once we have converted into theta 1. So, theta 1 is corresponding to certain value of e, we have to compute it okay. using the relationship we have developed for e and theta. So, using those relation we can work it out. Okay. So, we will do this problems later on in the trajectory transfer especially this is very much required. So, at that time we will do this problem. So, uh, so this theta 1 then we replace by e 1 and this is theta 2. So, theta 2 we write as theta generally. So, for the upper one. So, this we write as e and if we start with theta 1 equal to 0. So, at that time e will also be equal to 0. So, this is a simplification of this case. So, here we can write in terms of rather than writing in terms of e 1, we can write in terms of uh, this uh, here this can be replaced by 0 if this is the case as indicated here. So, theta 1 equal to we can insert it to be 0 like this. So, if we do this, so this is a pretty simplified case then. So, finally, we have t minus t this equal to 1 by h a square is also a constant. So, a square we can fetch it outside e is also a constant. So, that also we can take it outside. So, this gets it into a square times 1 minus e a square and inside the bracket we have 0 integral sign. Okay. This becomes this and this term, one term will cancel here. So, this is 1 minus e cos e and this is d. So, you can see that now we have got into a got a form which which can be integrated very easily and this was the reason of doing this exercise 
nothing else. So, this is 1 minus C A square divided by H and here we have E minus E sin E and integrating between 0 to E. So, this this term we will work little later. Let us finish this part first. So, this is T minus T then gets reduced to A square times 1 minus C A square divided by H and if we break this limit. So, this is E minus E sin E. So, this is the situation. So, we are measuring remember that we are measuring from this E 1 equal to 0. If we do not do this, so here we instead of 0 we will have E 1. So, one more term will simply get into this place. So, this is equation number 9. Okay. So, now, uh, we, we will simplify the term, we will simplify this term okay, and put it in a proper format. So, equation 9 can be reduced to t minus t equal to first we will copy this equation there a square times 1 minus c a square divided by h and then e minus e sin e. And this we can write as a times 1 minus c a square divided by h ok. So, this is nothing but this the this quantity from here to here this quantity is b a b by h e minus e sin or little bit of simplification because h also we need to eliminate uh, so, we can do some simplification here in this place. What we will do that h will replace in terms of, so I will rub out this step. This, let us continue with this and later on we will come to this part h square equal to mu times L under root. So, h we are going to replace h equal to mu times L under root. So, this is mu times L under root E minus E sin E So, mu under root L equal to A times 1 minus E a square. So, this is this is the way it is coming. So, E minus E sin E and you can see that 1 minus E a square will cancel out and we get here A to the power Q by 2 divided by mu under root E minus E sin E. this is t minus t and we use another relationship we know that time period is 2 pi by a q by mu we have already derived it ok. So, rewriting it 2 pi by t equal to omega this becomes mu by a cube under root ok. 
so m omega this is nothing but here mean angular rate mean angular rate and it is a customary to write this omega as n. So, this symbol is used okay. and therefore, if we use this. So, this gets reduced to t minus t equal to a q by mu. So, here in this case we, we have taken inside the bracket. So, I have simply written as a q by mu under root e minus e sin e. So, this equation we are using. So, a q by mu from this place as you can see this is mu by uh, a q under root is 1 by omega. So, this is 1 by omega or 1 by n we can write it 1 by n e minus e sin e okay. and putting it here in this format and the left hand side this quantity we denote it by m So, the equation 9, equation 10 here, equation 10 which we have written as m equal to e minus e sin e, this we call as the Kepler's equation. Left hand side as I have told you earlier, this is called mean anomaly, mean anomaly and while the capital E this we have written as the eccentric anomaly and this is written as the eccentricity. Okay, so if, uh, Now, if you remember I told uh, once during the last lecture or maybe before that, that uh, eccentricity for uh, this eccentric anomaly, this is a physical quantity. Okay. Also true anomaly theta, this is a physical quantity. Physical quantity means you can visualize it, it on the figure. If you go back, and look here in this place, so theta is visible here, and also the eccentric anomaly E is visible here. This is E, and this the theta, both are visible. So on the figure you can visualize it, but M you cannot visualize. The reason is very simple. This is because of the, the relationship we have got here. It is a purely mathematical quantity, okay. but it has got a lot of importance in solving various problems, especially in trajectory transfer, in rendezvous problem, so, so on. Okay. So, we will uh, discuss about this further. So, what we have written here m equal to n times t minus t, where n is the mean angular rate and capital T which is the beginning time also we call the epoch. So, now we uh, are going into uh, advancing little bit further. Okay. So, the sec next question will be uh, Next question is how to solve this problem. So, see the situation is that we are given A E i capital omega small omega and theta. So, these quantities already these are constants 
constants for Keplerian orbit these are constants for Keplerian orbit only theta is a variable. So, question can arise that if this is theta 1 and the satellite has to go to the another position which is say from this place to this place this is theta 2. Okay. So, this is position p 1 and this is position p 2 in the orbit this is elliptical orbit obviously and this is the perigee position or the peri axis. So, how much time it will take to go from this place to this place? Th this may be one question that means, from theta 1 to theta 2 how much time is involved? What is the corresponding this is equivalent to certain value of delta t which equal to t 2 minus t 1 how much it is going to take? So, we will reckon time from this place we will reckon time we will put here t equal to 0. So, at this place this will correspond to t 1 and this will correspond to t 2. Okay. Unlike the previous one we have we were writing here the limits as t 1 and t 2. So, this t 1 here it can be this point also if you uh, if you try to work it. So, this can be this point and this point also, but it is a convenient that we put it to t 1 equal to 0. So, this goes to the perigee position. So, perigee position to this one and then from uh, this to this that means, perigee to theta 2 and perigee to theta 1 we will use a, another color this angle and this angle this is your theta 1 and this is theta 2 this is theta 2. So, going from theta 1 to theta 2 that is equivalent to t 2 minus t 1. So, how we can calculate you find out the time from this place to this place and then again find time from this place to this place. So, this is done okay. So, if the angles are given so, you find out the corresponding time how much time it is going to take to come from this point to this point from here to this point. So, to solve this the technique we use so from t first you get m because already you know that n times t minus t equal to m. So, here t will be set to 0. Okay. So, n t this becomes equal to m. So, therefore, n times t 1 becomes equal to m 1. Okay. So, from t we get m and from m then we can solve for e. And once we have solved for e then we can get to the position r and theta because already uh, r and theta both of them are described in terms of e. So, solve for this. So, we have m 1 here you get e 1. So, the corresponding r 1 and theta 1 is available. Similarly, corresponding to t 2 you have m 2 here you can get this m 2 value and then e 2 and from there we will have r 2 and theta 2. So, this way the orbit is propagated. So, what we have done here in essence we are finding out if the if you are looking for the angular position. So, what was our desire that the initial theta is known and the final theta I am given. So, how much time we it is required other way it may be the time is given. So, how much theta it will cover. So, th these are the two problems. So, we have two problems here. So, two problems 
involved given delta theta find delta t or given delta t find delta theta. So, uh, these are the way uh, two things we can do. So, what we will do that uh, we will stop here and continue in the next lecture. So, uh, we will start from the same place where we have derived the Kepler's equation and thereafter we will proceed with uh, this particular one. So, how to solve this some uh, that we need to guess certain value for this. So, how to guess that and then uh, solve it. So, we will discuss about that problem. Obviously, on computer you can always uh, do the optimization and work out, but by ha using hands also uh, using simple calculator you can work it. Thank you very much.